master. I come seeking assistance yet again. Once again, I am befuddled by the structure of this jam. I'm trying to retract the vocals from Bohemian Rhapsody, and it's also uh, twisty and dense. Master, how might I use the dark side to accomplish my means? Oh, Vader. <laughs> Once again, you prove your theory is weak. You know I failed that class, and you know I'm still working through it with my therapist. But come on, man, just help me out. Seriously. Uh, you will find answers to the questions you seek. And it will be in the Cubase core track, which you might know if you had read the freaking manual, huh? And this will tell me the notes to sing? No, oh, you silly! It will give you the chords so that you can figure out what notes to sing, idiot! Dang it! How do I keep missing these simple things? Uh, I guess it's because the good ideas can't penetrate that thick helmet. That's my best guess. Howdy, y'all! What's up? Welcome back to the Rose. Glad you're here. Tip number six is a really cool one, where we throw recordings at the Cubase chord track and have it magically kick back the chord changes in the tune along with the appropriate scales as well. I can't even tell you how much I would have loved this and how much it would have helped me when I was a younger music Padawan learner. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the technique. So the first thing you do is just right click over here and click add chord track. That's the hard part. <laughs> Once you've got that set up, you're almost ready to go. You just need some kind of audio clip to put into this thing. So I just created a quick progression on the guitar for you. Uh, it's a little C, A minor to E minor jam. So you just take this. I'm gonna grab the, the guitar plane here and drag it right into the chord track and just drop it. And give it a second and there you go. There's the structure <laughs> of the little tune. C major, A minor, E minor, and that's all correct. That's exactly what I was playing. Isn't that awesome? Now, it's not always that clear, clean, and beautiful. This is really simple. I didn't use anything besides for church chords. That makes things easy, and that's great. So, let's just mute that out. Check this one out. This one's a little more complex. You can only have one chord track. So let's just wipe out what we got there. And let's try this one now. That one's a little more busy than the other one was, but let's see what Cubase says about it. So it gives us E minor. Now the E minor is not quite right. It's really an E minor seven. So that's the beginning of the kind of problems that I've generally seen with this. It doesn't give wrong answers. It gives correct answers, but without all the embellishment that it might need, right? So, which is fine. If you have no idea what you're doing and you just need to understand the chord structure on something so that you can work with it or play over it or do whatever, that's great. The difference between an E minor and an E minor seventh you know, it's one note, but and it's an important note, but at the same time, if you play E minor over it, you're going to be fine. You're never going to do anything goofy, right? Because you've just got that added minor 7th added to it, or the flat 7th. So with that, the E minor 7th, and then we go to G, which is correct, A sus 4, which is correct. And then we go to C, the C9. I'm playing like that standard based off the A9 chord um, on the guitar and it doesn't catch the nine. That's one of the things that I see is really common with it. It doesn't catch the nine. Sometimes it doesn't catch at all. And sometimes it'll put it in as a seven, which they're both okay. Um, they'll get you leaning in the right direction of what's going on. If you're coming in from base zero and you can't hear what's happening, it's, it's really fantastic for that. So with that, let's move on to one, just a little more complex than that one. The 
it's a little goofy. I tried to stress some complicated chords there, so some of the more complicated chords there, so that it would have a chance to really pick them up. So we have, you see, we start out with a D9 there, and it want, it catches that as a D7. Once again, that's not too bad. We have a G7 there. It just catches as a G. We have a C7. Now, see, the thing is, it's calling scales on the bottom, too, right? So some of the notes that are missing may be taken care of in those scales that it's saying. So we have the D7 there, and I say it's a D9, right? So the note that's missing is the E. So if we have the key of G major, it does have an E in it. So you know it's arguable so we have um well so we got the g7 they just list it as a g once again it's just missing some of the embellishment and then over here uh in this g a number of times i added the six it was a 13th chord you call it a sixth chord or a 13th whichever but there was a 13th in there and it didn't write that in so you know that's generally part of the melody but if you have a six chord that's actually part of the chord so but see these are it's theoretical stuff so it has no way to know this like hey do you mean that note as is it just a melody note or is it actually part of the chord that it's you know you're looking at it that way it's sustaining through the whole thing that type of thing so this is it's it's fuzzy anyway right the technology is not perfect and you know we have to go off of some kind of rules to have the computer sorted out right uh, next to last example is this just absolute random nonsense just to see what it would spit out, which is uh, fun. You know, I suggest that you do your own crazy little experiments with all the stuff. Now, see, that's the thing. Trying to do random stuff, you wind up doing things that aren't really random at all. Because I'm just doing random fingerings. It's like my fingers are programmed to do things that are things, right? <laughs> but you can see... If there's one thing that it does, it always gets that root, right? The root is there. You can count on it. It's right. I haven't seen it be wrong yet. If you're trying to jam on it, using those scales would be fine. It's all cool. Really helpful, especially, man, if I had this when I was first playing, learning things off of <laughs> records. <laughs> I guess that's cool again now. But, uh... There you go. That's the weird chords that I played. I don't see anything too funky up there. So yeah, it's just taking those the crazy notes on there and, and writing them off as just part of the melody. And then the last thing for fun we're going to do here is we're just going to drop uh, Mozart's Concerto for Piano and Orchestra number 5 in D major on this thing and see what it comes up with. See, like now it's really thinking. <laughs> It's like, wait a minute, you threw some real music on there. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, man, yeah, taking so long. I even cut some out for you. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, so it does pull off the sus chords. That's cool. My skills are not such that I can tell you instantly if that's right or not, but my guess is that it's pretty close. So that's it. Uh, the chord track and Cubase is automatically figuring out chords in your stuff. It's an awesome tool. I hope you had a fun time today. We'll check you out real soon. Quick shout out to all our supporters. And if you feel good about what we're doing here, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. It's three bucks a month, 25 cents more than a New York subway ride, which is an absolutely irrelevant but fun fact. And thanks for your help. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Dude, I told you, only in the intro.